choose to be inspired. Join me on Leadership Landscape. Welcome to another installment of Leadership Landscape TV, where we go inside the minds of community leaders and allow them a chance to offer some keen insights into how they see themselves and, most importantly, explore just what makes them tick. I'm Kurt Jacobs, host of Leadership Landscape TV, where previous interviews have included leaders from the world of politics, religion, sports, business, law, community activism, and civic engagement. Today, our 163rd guest is Katie George. She's Miss Kentucky USA 2015. And for those of you who don't know our guest, allow me to read some of her bio. Katie, known today as both a volleyball setting machine and a beauty queen, all in one, was born December 3rd, 1993, and is a native Louisvillian. 2012, Katie graduated from Assumption High School playing for revered volleyball coach Ron Cordes with many volleyball sports awards to her name. A few are. In 2010, Katie was featured in Sports Illustrated's Faces in the Crowd and led her team to the Regional 7 Tournament Championship in both 2010 and 2011. In 2011, she was named to Under Armour's All-American Watch List and named KVCA's Miss Kentucky Volleyball in Region 7's Player of the Year as well as KHSCA's Outstanding Senior for Volleyball and KHSAA's State Tournament MVP. You can check out all those initials later, but you know what I mean. In 2012, Katie was named Prep Volleyball's National Player of the Year, and in that same year, Katie came to the UofL Cardinals volleyball team, having excelled under Assumptions coach Ron Cordes and Kentucky Indiana Volleyball's Academy's Christy Chapman Urig. Katie earned a starting nod in just the fourth match of the season. In 2013, Katie spent her summer overseas and was named to the all-tournament team for the U.S. National Collegiate Team, winning the silver medal at the European Global Challenge Tournament in Croatia. In early 2014, Katie was a WLKY TV Channel 32 sports intern, and in the summer of 2014, Katie interned for the CBS Corporation in New York City. However, what she may be best known for today is in January 2015, Katie was crowned Miss Kentucky USA and in July 2015 competed in the Miss USA pageant, finishing in the top 15, having been eliminated, then receiving some 250,000 call-in votes in just 10 minutes to place her in the top 11. Although she was not crowned Miss USA, keep in mind, folks, she never competed in a beauty pageant and had no family history of beauty pageants before January 2015. Oh, did I mention Katie graduated in May of 2015 after just three years with a BA in communications and a minor in sports administration, yet taking courses in her fourth year, which will allow her to play her senior year at University of Louisville in volleyball. Katie is the daughter of Tim and Annie George. She speaks Spanish and is of Lebanese descent. Katie, it is such a true pleasure to have <laughs> you here on Leadership Landscape TV. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's really it. great. What drives you to excel at what you've done and then we will get into the explanation of some of these different pageant titles and <laughs> what they mean to the I think what drives me is just the fact that knowing that I can be better each and every day mm -hmm. I'm always waking up with a new goal and mind setting for myself of you know I'm this role model in the community for young sure. girls and that's not just in the volleyball world that now expands much further and I want to have that responsibility. I want to be better for them. I want to be the best version of myself mm -hmm. each and every day. And I think that that's what makes me tick, and that's what drives me every single day. That's great. Now, I want to get this out of the way first, because okay. I think there's a lot of miss, yeah. you know, crowns and miss this and that pageant. Can you explain, you know, somewhat slowly, you know, what's Miss Kentucky, Miss America, mm -hmm. um, was it Miss USA? See, I can't even remember. Miss Universe. Universe. Yes. Maybe do it in that order. Well, a lot of people have trouble sure. understanding. I had trouble myself when I first won. Mm -hmm. So I competed in the Miss Kentucky USA pageant. Mm -hmm. So the USA is the kicker here. Okay. So as Miss Kentucky USA, you go on and you compete at the Miss USA pageant. Okay. And for the, one er the winner, she goes on to compete at the Miss Universe pageant. Okay. So those three pageants are all in one and they're owned by NBC and Donald Trump and okay. Universal. Gotcha. Now, if you win Miss Kentucky, you're competing in the Miss America pageant, okay. which is correlated ah. with ABC. Okay. So people often say, best of luck, Katie, at the Miss America pageant. Well, I'm not competing. I didn't compete mm -hmm. at the Miss America pageant. I competed at Miss USA. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the sash. If it was just Miss Kentucky, that's right. Miss America. If it's Miss Kentucky USA, that's the Miss USA ah, pageant. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Whom do you credit most influential in your life, Katie? It can be more than one, personal or professional. I would say my family in general. I think my grandfather, he's from Lebanon, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. His 
parents immigrated from Beirut, Lebanon, okay, and wow. you know they started from absolutely nothing. They went to Ellis Island and they couldn't speak any English, and mm -hmm. so they couldn't understand his last name, and so they just said, "Well, you'll be George." <laughs> and so that's where the last name comes from, well, being. us being Lebanese. But he worked very, very hard, my papa. Mm -hmm. um, he put himself through medical school at the University of Louisville, mm -hmm. you know, and he's a wonderful provider and patriarch of my family. And then my two parents are wonderful role models. They not only are my provider mm -hmm. and my caregivers, but they're my best friends. I can sure. tell them anything. And, you know, they always instilled in me at a very early age that I was capable of anything that I put okay. my mind to. And that right. I needed to dream big because I could have a big life and I think just knowing that from a very young age mm -hmm. and having that confidence that has taken me so far already. Mm -hmm. Now this next question I like I think I know the answer what is your biggest professional triumph and again it can be personal or professional. Well, I don't I feel like I've had a lot of great things happen sure. to me I'm very blessed but I don't know some people I'm sure would say it's being you know Miss Kentucky USA mm -hmm. um, some people would say that, you know, it's just winning volleyball games. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think I like to peg it as one thing. Right. I think just being a good role model for people, that's probably something that I think is like my best. Mm -hmm. And I'm really appreciative for being able to do that for people and being able to reach out right. and make them have a better day or, you know, really instill belief in them. Uh -huh. Now, I, in my research of you, when you were younger, you used to say, I do it, I do it. Can you explain what that is a little bit? <laughs> I, so I have two older brothers, okay. and Timmy and Charlie, and they're wonderful now. They're wonderful right, now. Right, right, right. Yeah. But growing up with them as the only girl and, you know, five and four years younger was very difficult. They played every sport in the backyard with my father, and I never wanted to be left out. Mm -hmm. So I would come outside, and at three years old, I would say, I do it, I do it. Pass me the ball. Right. You know, I want to throw That's the scary. ball. And, of course, my dad would throw me the ball. Um, and my older brothers would get so mad. They said, you know, she's a girl. She's too young. She's not good enough. She's not fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, always putting me down, as older brothers do. And luckily for me, having that in my life, I was able to say, well, I'm going to be better as I grew older. Right. I'm going to be faster. I'm going to be stronger. And so, you know, slowly in backyard games, they started picking me over their boyfriends, you know. And mm -hmm. so... It was just funny because I think that the competitive person that I am and the spirit that I have, it's because of how my older brothers treated me I at a young it. age. <laughs> and now they're two of my biggest supporters. Uh -huh. So it's just funny how it works out. What's the best piece of advice ever given to you? Again, personal, professional, could be in volleyball or mm -hmm. the beauty pageants or just life in general. I think being yourself and having no reservations for that, mm -hmm. really right. accepting who you are. Um, I think, you know, being a young person, there are so often that we think that we have to be something that we're not, that we have to mm -hmm. cater to somebody or try to be, you know, something to fit in. And I don't think that that's something that people should strive for. I don't. Right. You know, I want to be the best version of myself, like I said, and I think that that's important just to accept, you know, the body that God has given you, to mm -hmm. accept the mind that you have, and to really embrace yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I think when people say, just be you, be Katie George, mm -hmm. you know, going into the Miss USA pageant, yeah. it's really hard because... Sure. Everything's so subjective. You don't know what you're being judged on. Right. But I would never forgive myself if I were to have won Miss USA mm -hmm. and I wasn't myself the entire two weeks that I was down there. Mm -hmm. Because then you go on to be Miss USA and you're having to be something that you're not. Right. So I wanted them to pick me mm -hmm. as the Katie George that I know and I've worked so hard to become. Right. And so I think that that's really important. Well, I think it's a good time to bring this up. And I, I'm trying to couch this in a way so it mm -hmm. doesn't come off as demeaning or disrespectful. But... You know, you're young. A lot of things have happened fairly quickly to you. Mm -hmm. You're intelligent. You're bright. You know, I've interviewed a lot of people on this show. I can already sense that. So with all that being prefaced, how do you deal with when individuals, male or female, may look at the external aspect mm -hmm. and not look at the inside and maybe pass judgment on you? How do you handle that as a leader? I think when I was younger, especially in high school, mm -hmm. it really bothered me. Okay. And I would get really upset when people would just judge me based on how I look without getting to know me, you know, mm -hmm. people have so many, you know, preconceived notions about who you are just based on looking at you, and right. I hate that that's the way things are, but now I've come to understand, you know, even in my short lifespan that right. you can't control what people think of you. Mm -hmm. I know that the people who do know me personally, who care about me, they know the real me, and they mm -hmm. know what I'm about, and they know that I'm intelligent, and there's much more that, you know, goes beyond what meets the eye, mm -hmm. but... 
I try not to worry about what people think, and mm -hmm. I just try to make sure that everybody that I meet, that I get to show them who Katie George really is on the inside, mm -hmm. and so that they're not thinking of me in a different way. I think that that's important, and I think, you know, moving forward, I always try to tell people, never judge someone, you know, mm -hmm. based on the cover. That's so cliche, but right. it really is true. I mean, I judged pageants. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years did I think that I'd ever be in a pageant because right. there's negative connotations that go with it. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, the, the women, all they care about is their beauty and they're conceited right. and there's no intellect. Mm -hmm. But having gone through it, being a part of it, mm -hmm. that's absolutely not true. And I can that's speak great. to that because that I've, you you know, I've been through it. You did it. Um, you know, the women are very hardworking. They're role mm -hmm. models to young girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, the things that we've done, the 51 women who competed at Miss USA, I mean, are really incredible. Mm -hmm. And people just don't take the time to get to know that. Now, this question, you're one of our younger, you're actually the youngest guest we've oh, ever wow. had on the show. So awesome. the, that and a bag of chips will get you into heaven, as I would yeah. say. But uh, this question might be a little bit off, but I want to ask mm -hmm. you, what is the one most positive thing you think you've contributed to humanity? It's one of those mouthful yeah. questions. At 21 years old, hmm. I know I've talked a lot about being a role model. I think mm -hmm. you are. I've contributed winning volleyball games, yeah. you know, volleyball trophies. Sure. Um, but, you know, I've contributed a crown. But I think, honestly, my biggest contribution thus far is mm -hmm. being a good role model, being responsible, you know, as a young adult right. for young girls to look up to. Um, That's a great piece of advice. People always ask me, do you get tired of it? Do you think that you have too much responsibility? Does it bother you? I know that if I didn't have the responsibility that I have today, I wouldn't be living the life that God intended me to live. There you go. And so I think just knowing that, I mean, we talk about, you know, being the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. I really think that I hope I'm showing girls you can be a fierce competitor mm -hmm. on the volleyball court or whatever sport, and you can be beautiful and elegant on a stage. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be two different people to do that. You can be the exact same person. Mm -hmm. And I want young girls to know you can have a dream come about in 10 days mm -hmm. and you can make it happen. That's you great. know, my dream to become Miss Kentucky USA happened a month or two in advance. Right. So I want them to reach for the stars and really if mm -hmm. they, they put their mind to it and work hard, they can accomplish anything. Now this show's called Leadership Landscape TV, so we ask the obvious question. Can you mm -hmm. define leadership in one word in the great English lexicon, as I always say to our guests? It can be more than one, or it can even be a phrase if you prefer. I think influential. Okay, is I don't a think great we've had that one. Influential, I think, is obviously in a positive way sure. as a leader. I always try to be influential if that's on the volleyball court with my teammates, if that's mm -hmm. in the classroom, if that's in the relationships that I have in my life. And I think that if you're influential, obviously you'll have charisma, you'll mm -hmm. have passion, creativity, and all those are important mm -hmm. things of being a great leader. If you could change one thing in your own life or in general, what would that be? What might that be? In other words, a magic wand. No rules, no laws, if you will. I wish you didn't have to do your hair and makeup. <laughs> I'm so over it. This is a beauty pageant. <laughs> I Contestant well, in winter. After two weeks of being down in Baton Rouge at Miss USA, waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning just to do your hair and makeup, mm -hmm. to start the day, I'm like, I just do not want to touch my hair. I don't want right. to pick up a, a makeup brush. Um, <laughs> I know I that's part it. of the gig, you but. Know, but that's the way it works, <laughs> you know. So could you just describe in detail a particular scenario or incident where you utilized your philosophy on leadership? I mean, influential mm -hmm. is the word you used. I think so. You touched on my career starting out at U of L, and I was a freshman, and there mm -hmm. was a junior setter on the team, mm -hmm. and that's my position. And the first three games, um, I didn't play. I didn't start, and that was obviously. Nothing new to me. I expected right. that with her being there with the experience. But I, being the competitive person that I am, I wanted to play. Sure. And I wanted to help my team. And so I got the starting nod in the fourth game, mm -hmm. and that was against UK. So okay. the big uh -huh. rival, sure. you know, it's an emotional game. Sure. It's a mental game more mm -hmm. so than anything. Um, there was about 6,000 fans at the KFC M Center, and I got the starting nod, which was amazing. And as a freshman, I was setting All-American hitters, mm -hmm. you know, senior All-American hitters. And it's interesting trying to find your way as a leader when mm -hmm. you're trying to lead other people who are older than you. Sure. So it's Good a point. fine line. And what I learned was in the position of a setter, you already get leadership because you're the quarterback on the team. Mm -hmm. But 
it's finding what motivates people because everybody's motivated differently. Mm -hmm. And what I found through volleyball, which is a great way, is what you say to one girl and how you talk to her on the court is completely different than the girl next to her because everybody's ah, motivated differently. Good point. So you can say something to somebody, you know, and get on them to mm -hmm. maybe motivate them, mm -hmm. get under their skin a little bit. Whereas the next girl, you have to stroke her, you know? Mm -hmm. That was my fault, even if it wasn't my fault. Right. You have to tell her so that she stays calm mentally. Or, you know, I have a teammate that I just squeeze her hand. Just squeeze her hand and let her know that I'm there. I don't even say anything because I know that sometimes it stresses her out. Right. So I think being perceptive and intuitive when mm -hmm. you walk into situations as a leader, you have to know what is needed of you. Mm -hmm. And so when I walked into that game, no, they don't need a commander in chief. They don't need someone barking orders at them. Mm -hmm. Everybody was great. They needed a spark. They needed somebody to be energetic, to bring mm -hmm. life to the court. Because we looked, you know, after the first game, uh -huh. we lost. And then we ended up winning in four. We won the next three. They didn't Great. need, you know, they needed a burst of energy. And I thought, I can do this. I can bring my adrenaline. This is my first game. This is in front of so many family and friends, in front of my city. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be that for people. I want to be, you know, the energy on the court. And so that's what I was able to do. And it was probably one of the best games in my life. Yeah. Um, even though I've had three years after that, but still sure. I always think back to that game because I understood the situation, I understood it, understood what was needed of me, and um, I understood how to motivate the others around me. My job as a setter is to make those around me better. And I know that no matter what, win or lose, mm -hmm. if I walk away knowing that I did my job and I helped others do theirs, then I did. You know, I accomplished what I wanted to. That's an awesome answer. Yeah, <laughs> it's thanks. like one of the best answers we've ever had <laughs> yeah, for that. Thanks. So this next question, I love this one. Mm -hmm. What does Katie George stand for? Not what you, what they say about you, but right. what you think of yourself. I think Katie George stands for being real and relatable. Okay. Somebody who makes others around them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. I, you know, don't try to portray myself as something that I'm not. What you see is what you get, and I hope that you know I'm an open book to people, mm -hmm. and that they really can get to know me if they just take the time to. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, want to be that role model for people that they can say, you know, I talked to her, and she's just like me. Right. Look what she's been able to accomplish thus far in her life. Mm -hmm. I can do that too because that's I'm just like advice. her. Mm -hmm. So I think you know that's what I stand for: being the real, relatable person. Authentic. Authentic. I yes. I like that. Great that's word. Cool. So this next question, I'm going to couch a little differently, even though the show's about leadership. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a difference in today's athletes, since most of your history is in the athletic world, a than there is in previous generations? Or let's put it this way. Do you think a Katie George could do what you've done today, say 30 years ago? Well, Title IX changed that a little bit. Yes, but yes. right, right, right. Um, I think so. I think... It's not necessarily about the time, it's about the person. Okay. And I think if you have somebody who is very confident and very sure of themselves mm -hmm. and knows what they want and what they can go and accomplish, mm -hmm. I set goals for myself every single day. If it's a small goal of cleaning the dishes right. or if it's a long-term goal of what mm -hmm. I want to do in my career, I think setting goals is really important and I think no matter if that was 30 years ago, if, there, if that's going to be you know, 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. I think if you have that and you have that motivation and determination, you can accomplish anything that you set your mind to. Um, it's interesting to see how athletes are changing. I think this is going to sound you know, negative, but I think parents get really involved now than they once did, where I believe as an athlete you should fight your own battles. Mm -hmm. I never once let my parents talk to the coach about playing time for me. If I wanted more playing time, it was my job to go talk to the coach wow. and to work that out. And I think that's how you grow as a person, mm -hmm. you know, and find out how you build relationships in a healthy manner. Because so much, so often I think parents want to coddle their kids and then kids don't work hard. And kids sometimes, today I've seen, you know, they feel like they're entitled. And I right. think that that's absolutely the wrong mm -hmm. message and the wrong idea to have. Because you have to work really, really hard. I know from the outside looking in, mm -hmm. people have said, wow, you know, she's got so much going for it, just, it's easy. Well, I've worked really, really hard exactly. if that's in the classroom or if that's on the volleyball court or, you know, on the stage recently. And I think, you know, I don't have any reservations saying that mm -hmm. because I'm proud of the hard work that I've put in. And I think that young kids need to know that you still have to work hard to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be given to you. 
You know, it's one thing I always say sometimes is that, you know, you can get handed a title, but you can't get handed achievements. you got to go earn them. You have to exactly. go get them. This next question I like as well, and then we're going to get to some of these uh, crowns and okay. sashes <laughs> and whatnot up here. If you were granted two weeks right today, and I know this question is a little off because mm -hmm. you're, you know, getting into the beginning of your career, but right. basically you had 14 calendar days. Okay. No technology. You basically get lost. Do whatever you want on the planet. Okay. Where do you go? What do you do? Who do you take with you? I take my mother and father, and I mm -hmm. take my two older brothers with me, just the five of us. I absolutely, that's one of my favorite things to do is just spend time with my family. That's great. We're very close, even though, you know, my older brothers are four and five years older. Mm -hmm. um, they're two of my best friends, and so are my parents. We would probably go to the beach. Yeah. Um, we went to Hilton Head Island every year mm -hmm. growing up in the summertime, and it was probably, you know, some of my best memories come from Hilton Head in South Carolina. So. I um I would definitely want to go there for 14 days and just relax. I would love leaving my cell phone at home. Mm -hmm. My cell phone beeps off over well, and over I'm again, sure and now. I just yeah. I know I just sometimes <laughs> just don't even want to look at it or respond to people, which is horrible. But yeah. yeah. So now I'm sure the audience has been watching this as we've mm -hmm. spoken. But explain this to us. But before you do, you have an, a personal object on your finger. I do. That I want you to share with the audience, and, and they might be able to get a close up or later. But. It's a coincidence because my father, it's a crown ring, okay. um, and apparently that's very big when you win your state pageant, mm -hmm. girls receive crown rings. Okay. Well, I already had one, and my dad gave Amazing. it to me when I was 12 years old, and it didn't fit because, you know, I was much smaller then, but now it does. Let me put it down there. Yeah. Um, and so he gave it to me when I was 12, and he said, obviously, I'm his little girl, I'm his princess, but he said... The oldest form of leadership rests in the crown. Okay. And so I thought, you know, at 12 years old, you don't really, it's like, thanks, it's cool, <laughs> sure it's a pretty did. ring. Oh, I love know? it, right, right. And now, after winning mm -hmm. this crown and having this, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, how perfect mm -hmm. of a symbol to carry with me every single day because I don't wear this every single day, you know, sure. obviously when right. I'm doing activities as Miss Kentucky USA, but I wear this almost every single day, and it's just a reminder that, when I wake up, it's not about the accessory. It's not right. about looking beautiful. It's about how do I serve others because this is a platform for me to serve others and to help people mm -hmm. and to instill that belief that we've talked about in young girls. And so I love having it on my hand mm -hmm. you know, every single day because when I glance down, it's a constant reminder of right. how do I serve others today. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's a great segue into this crown. This crown. Now, Maybe you can explain what the stars mean, why there's a certain amount, or, or is there you know, any re reason for that? I don't really know. It's beautiful. Um, sure. Unfortunately, the size of it Doesn't is not for a human head. Right. <laughs> um, I like to laugh and say that this is for Hey Arnold, um, yeah. the football head. Yeah, I love but it. All 51, the 50 states in the District of Columbia have the same crown. Okay. So at the state level, you win this crown. I see. Um, and I get to keep it. It's mine. It that was my next question. It doesn't get passed down, um, and neither does the sash. I and didn't so know if you wanted to hold that up or yeah. you know, watch your mic there. Don't rub against it. But so this is my sash, Miss Kentucky USA, the USA okay. being the big indicator. Um, but never in a million years did yeah. I think that I'd be saying this is my sash. Pretty impressive. I know. It's, it's crazy amazing. to know that. You know, I competed in this in one of my first pageant, and then mm -hmm. moving forward, I competed in the Miss USA pageant. Yeah. I'm going to have stories for a lifetime. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, we've got some pictures here I want to go through, and then I've got a few questions okay. left for you. So I'm just going to hand them to you, and, yeah. you, and you explain them, hold okay. them up to the screen, and then flip it over. So this is Brooke Mattingly. She was a senior when okay. I was a freshman, and this is us blocking. Uh, I'm not a great blocker. I uh, didn't inherit a great vertical jump, um, nice. unfortunately, but I've got my hands over the net, and I think I probably blocked that one. It looks like it mm -hmm. lined up perfectly. Um, flip it over. And then this. This is the same. This is the same woman that's <laughs> sitting here that competed for Miss USA. It just it just cracks me up. It is so funny because I feel like that's my trade now in the volleyball world is having my mouth wide open, screaming. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that you know every picture captures the sure. passion and the competitive spirit on the court so and we'll have to move quickly through these yeah there's another I same open mouth 
good fist pump there. Nice. They said they hadn't seen a fist pump in a long time um, at U of L, so it's I'm glad that I brought it back. I mean, the the, the level of uh, competition in here is is amazing. I think. Yeah, I love looking at my hair. Gosh, it's always <laughs> such a mess. And then here we go with this. Start oh, with that. Oh, it's much one. better here. Um, this was right after. You won, right? I won. I was being crowned at that moment, um, and you know I was crying. Um, sure. It was very emotional. I Never can imagine. Did I think that I would cry on mm -hmm. a stage like that? But so there you are, some accepting petty it. Petty stuff, yeah. And you're then there it is with my bouquet and pretty picture. You're gonna love this next one. You talk about how you like to eat, oh, so I had to get gosh. that in there. I know. I feel like the camera is always around when I'm doing embarrassing things, but I had to have a funnel cake at the sure the parade. I mean, Why you not? can't you can't go wrong. And then on the one on the back is a picture with the volleyball. The Courier Journal did this the week that I won. That's um, great. Yeah, they love that. And we'll fly through these now. Look and at that. Is this that is, yeah, this is the picture that was in the program at the Miss Kentucky USA pageant. So That's great. we took that a month before. It's the same one, the <laughs> same lady that did the volleyball. I love the hand thing. I don't know what's going on there. But. So I'm serving the crown. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure that out. It's hard to tell from the front view, but when it's from the side, you can tell. But they said, why don't you serve the crown? And so I was all for it. I love blending the two worlds together. I got you. There's some more model shots of you. So Andrew Kung is the official Miss Kentucky USA photographer, okay. and he took these pictures after okay. I won. And then Fidel Berisha um, is the official photographer at the Miss USA pageant, and he took this swimsuit shot of me. It's, my dad said, where's your cover up? And there's the bikini shot, to be honest. Bikini shot. Yep. I know my dad probably had to go to the bathroom at this point <laughs> in the show. Um, On national TV. Yeah, so yeah. I'm very proud of the body that I worked for. Um, and then here's the, the evening, evening gown, which I absolutely loved. It matched the stage well. And this is the last picture, and that just gives an idea of what you were competing against or, or the ladies you were competing against, the contestants. Yep, those were the five that had the chance to be saved mm -hmm. um, by the vote. And so, you know, That's luckily, great. yeah, that was me. R very quickly, how did that feel to have 250,000 votes? Well, I didn't know right. that it was that massive of an amount. Mm -hmm. I was upset, obviously, that I got eliminated, but well, thinking... Sure. Please, you know, I told everybody and their brother, vote for me, vote right, for me, right. you know, if I need it. Right. And so I went backstage and I got changed and came out and I, you could see your family members and my mm -hmm. two older brothers were standing up, That's giving great. me the thumbs up. So I kind of knew going in that I had won because I figured they had gotten on their phones. That's great. If you could have written a letter to your younger self, what would you have said? I know it's a loaded question. You're going to be very blessed. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a very blessed life. Take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Give back to people as best you can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God has really blessed you, and you should be thankful for that, and don't ever take that for granted. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what I would say. And you're going to have to work hard, um, mm -hmm. but you're going to be able to accomplish so many things because of it. So mm -hmm. keep your head down, keep working hard. That's great. Now, this next question we ask all mm -hmm. of our guests, and like I said earlier, you're our 163rd guest on the that's show. A lot. You are by far the youngest guest okay. we've ever had. <laughs> So in that sense, it makes you a pretty remarkable leader and role model. Thank you. So this is a little off-putting question to ask for someone mm -hmm. so young. But how do you want to be remembered? You know, if, if God forbid something happened, how do you want to be remembered? So Maya Angelou is, you know, someone that I really look up to. And one of her quotes, and it's my favorite, said, People will never remember what you said. Mm -hmm. People will never, never remember what you did. People will never forget the way you made them feel. And that to me, if I'm remembered as somebody who made others around me feel good about themselves, mm -hmm. then I'm doing okay. That's a great note to end on. Thank it's you. It's such a pleasure having you on Leadership nice Landscape TV. All I the best it. to you. Sky's the limit. I yeah, mean, here I we go. So. Thank you. I love it. If you have any general feedback or a suitable guest suggestion, feel free to email me at Kurt, K-I-R-T, at leadershiplandscapetv.com. Also, check us out on Facebook. Just type in Leadership Landscape TV. We're there. Over 36,000 likes. Until next time, I'm Kurt Jacobs. Thanks for watching.